Google Scholar is a fantastic tool, and to be perfectly honest, it's one of my favorites. I usually start my research with Google Scholar and then move on to other subject databases through the library. Google Scholar is multidisciplinary, meaning it covers a lot of different subjects. So if you're searching for something that may be in one subject but may be in another, Google Scholar is a good place to go because it searches across all subjects at the same time. It's Google, so it's super easy to use, and it's available anywhere. You can be standing in line at the grocery store and all of a sudden have an idea and execute a search on Google Scholar right on your phone without logging into the library first. But there's a couple of things to keep in mind with Google Scholar. Not everything is peer reviewed. So Google Scholar goes out and it says, well, I think all these things are scholarly materials and I'm going to index them, but they may not necessarily be peer reviewed. So it is super important that you keep your evaluation skills handy and you use your critical thinking skills when you're using Google Scholar. You might need to look up things directly. So things aren't linked in a seamless way like they are in other library databases. You might find a citation to something and have to go to the library and look up to see if the library owns the journal for you to get access to the article. This is called known item searching and we do have some materials in Moodle on it. And of course you can always ask me or the library how to look up something specific. And Google Scholar may not be super current. It may take up to six months or even a year for Google to index materials that it thinks is scholarly. So just be aware that even though it's a good tool to use, there are some things that you need to be aware of when you're using Google Scholar. There are a lot of ways to get to Google Scholar. Starting from Google's homepage, you can just Google for Google Scholar. You could also go up to the address bar and type scholar.google.com or you can get to it through the library's databases link. From the library's homepage, click on databases, click the drop downs and navigate to Google Scholar. So when you start with Google Scholar, start like you would any other Google search. Just throw some terms in. I'm going to search for present preventing nursing burnout. Now one of the things that you'll notice right away is that Google Scholar automatically truncates for you. Our result number one is preventing nursing burnout. Result number two is burnout prevention. So you don't have to use a truncation symbol like you do with library databases. That's one of Google's great features is that it will automatically look up truncated words for you. A couple of other really neat things about Google Scholar you have these options at the bottom of all of your result citations. The most interesting one I want to point out here is the related article search. If you find something that is really helpful and interesting, you can click on the related articles link and that will execute a search for you with all the things that Google says is related to that original search result. Now another interesting thing here is the star. And if you click on the star, what that does is it adds it to your My Library. So Google will keep things for you just like EBSCO. You will need to be logged in, but you can also log in with your ISU account because those are technically Google accounts. You can go over to the My Library here and click on that, and then you can see all of the things that you have saved up in your Google Scholar. If you want to modify that, you can use the check boxes to edit, to delete, download, label, whatever you want. So let's go back to our original results and take a look at the sidebar here on the left hand side of the screen. Now, by default, Google sorts by relevance, but you can also change it so that it sorts by date. This is a nice way to see all of the really hot things that are coming out related to your search terms. You can also limit to time ranges or even set a custom range. So if you heard about a study that came out in 95, you could actually do a custom range search from like 1992 to 1998 to kind of catch a whole different time period that isn't just the years listed.
two other things to look at before we move on is the quotes. You see these at the bottom and if you click on them, it'll actually show you Google's way of coming up with a citation. You have different formats here. Now this comes with a huge element of evaluation for you because this is only pulling from the metadata field and it may not be accurate. So whenever you do use the cite feature, double check your citations to make sure that they're actually current before you use them in a bibliography. The other thing is this create alert. Now, Google will actually let you know if something related to your search term comes up. So if you click create alert, then you can decide what your alert query is and what email address you want Google to let you know when things are new. So if you're following something, you can actually set up an alert and anytime something is indexed in Google Scholar that relates to your search, you'll get an email to know to go look at that new article. Let's go back and take a look at some different features. Like any good indexing tool, Google Scholar has a great advanced search feature. Up in the upper left hand corner, you'll see three bars. If you click on those, you'll get a menu that pops up to the side and you can scroll down and select the advanced search. Here, you can really start to dig in to the thousands of Google Scholar results. You can throw in your terms using all of the words, which is your AND operator. You can search for an exact phrase of something, which is also your quotes. So you could just type your uh, phrase directly into the search bar and put quotes around it with at least one of the words, which is your OR operator, or without the words, which is your NOT operator. You can specify where the words occur in the title of the article or anywhere in, in, as a keyword search. You can look for specific authors, and you can look for articles published in specific journals. So if somebody had said, hey, it's in this particular journal, you could just execute a search across that journal using your terms. And of course, there's another date limiter here as well. I'm going to close this, and I'm going to go back over to our menu bar, because there's a couple of things in settings that I want you to know about. When you click on settings, you have a lot of different things that you can set to customize how Google Scholar works for you. You can determine how many results per page, whether or not results open in a new window. And you can also, if you click on the library links, add a link to ISU's resources. So execute a search for Idaho State, and you will see that there is a checkbox for Idaho State's Find It at Idaho. And the reason why you want to do this, let's go ahead and save this, is that when you execute a search, and let's ch switch this to any time, now you see this Find It at Idaho State University on the side. And if you click on this, this will take you over to ISU's resources and it'll prompt you to log in if you're not already logged in, but it should drill right into where that item is. Now, this is really important because think of how you can use Google Scholar, but then have a direct link right into all the stuff that ISU manages and pays for, for you to use for your research. So it's really important to turn that on. I'm going to close this screen I'm going to, and back over at Google Scholar. We're going to click and go down to our settings one more time because there's one other really fun thing that Google Scholar does, and this is the Google Scholar button. So if you click on the button, it'll actually make a little button up on the right-hand corner of your browser. Now this is really fantastic because if you have this here and you're anywhere, if you come across an, an article, even in regular Google or in EBSCO, you can click on that and it will execute a search for, uh, for that item in uh, Google Scholar. And then you can use it for citation searching, which is a powerful feature that we're going to talk about in just a little bit. So let's try out the button. I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to go to the library. And using OneSearch, I'm going to search for compassion fatigue. And so now OneSearch is essentially the um, EBSCO databases. I'm going to choose my top result. And now that I'm looking at this, I can click on my Google Scholar button and you can see that it pops up a little window. 
Here, I can click into the item. I can also look and see what the related articles are to that using Google Scholar. But most importantly, I can get right into citation searching, which is something that we're going to look at later on. And citation searching is a really powerful search tool, and using the Google Scholar button in any library database or anywhere will get you into that cited feature. So it's really, really handy, and I strongly encourage you to add the Google Scholar button and use it because you'll find it to be very, very helpful. So that's Google Scholar in a nutshell. Um, happy Googling!